Hi, this is Professor David Bashai. Welcome back. I'm here to give us part two of the Demand for Health lecture. And in this part of the lecture, we're going to talk about the marginal efficiency of capital, which is a central feature in the model. However, we have to use mathematics to understand this part of the model. Now, the original Grossman reading from the 1970s is quite complex. And uh, if you read it, you're really going to be thankful that there's this lecture to help walk you through what the Grossman paper is trying to say. It's such an important paper, this is really worth getting an understanding of what, what is going on in the Grossman model of health and why is it so important as a central piece of a course in health economics. So remember from last time, uh, the Grossman model of health assumes that nobody but the individual can produce the individual's health, that, that it is a micro, micro, microeconomic model that individuals make their own health, and they do that out of combining their own time with goods that they buy in the marketplace. We know that individuals value health, but they value other things too. They don't only care about health, otherwise nobody would overeat or smoke or drink or drive too fast. Uh, people do this because they're trading off health against other things that seem important at the time. Finally, it's is economics. There's a scarcity and there's a limited income with which people can finance their health and other activities, so they have to make, uh, make choices. So let's talk about the, the reasons people value health. Why is their health demand? So the easy way, very intuitive, and you're going to say, well, duh, right? Everybody values health. It makes you have utility. And sure enough, here is one version of the model that says we value health because it directly gives us utility. Anybody with a body knows that if your body is not healthy, you don't have utility. And all of the things you do that day in consumption don't give you as much utility. So we get that, that's right here, we're modeling that mathematically with U equals U of health capital and consumption commodities. Other things you're going to see in a micro model are a budget constraint that the income, this is an exogenous income that comes from the sky. You just get money and you, it's symbolized by the letter Y. And then you spend that money on two things. You buy consumption commodities, C, times the price you have to pay for each consumption commodity. And then the other part of your money you spend on buying medical care inputs like pills and doctor visits and you buy them at price P sub M. Why did you buy those medical care inputs? You bought them because you use them in this production function. F of M is how each individual transforms doctor visits into their body's health capital. This is a transformation product. So this model, very straightforward, it is core Grossman model that we are buying health because it gives us direct health benefits and we feel better. Okay, there's another version in the original Grossman paper <clears throat> where he says, look, we could get all of the same implications without the assumption that people actually care about their body. So this is a great model for artificial intelligence, that if you don't even have a body, and all you want is utils from consumption opportunities, we could do a Grossman model for you. However, what we need is that your body's health determines your productivity. So now instead of Y being your income, we generate income by having a wage times hours spent earning that money. T is hours spent. So, and W depends upon how healthy you are. And the rest of the model is the same. So health increases our wage, and then you get extra stuff, and that extra stuff gives you utility. Now, this makes sense that your wage depends on your health. It makes a lot of sense for a sugarcane cutter who has to earn money per bushel of sugarcane. Uh, it makes a little bit of sense for uh, other blue-collar workers. For white-collar workers, they're thinking, well, look, I've got a disability insurance. Uh, doesn't matter if I get a little bit of sick, it's not going to change my, my annual earnings. So this is a picture of big changes in, in, in health where you're disabled for a year or you have to retire early and lose large chunks of your lifetime earning. We can still accept the model as something useful if we conceive of it that way. So we've got a reason that this individual might care about health. Let's go on and talk about another feature of the Grossman model, and that is that we're going to have time features in this model. Health is something we invest in today to give us good things tomorrow, like 
most capital, right? We buy a machine today because we're going to get returns into the future. Grossman was the first to recognize that health had that property. It's a piece of human capital where you, you do something to your body today and the next 10, 20 years is going to give you something good about that investment. So because it's capital, we're going to use a health capital dynamic equation that the health at time t is equal to the health at time t minus 1 minus the depreciation of a part of that health capital is going to fade away due to depreciation processes and it's going to need to be replaced by the production process. We've already talked about f of mt and I've added shifting factors just to tell you that environment and education also could affect how productive these medical care inputs might be. We'll get to that later. So we've got uh, depreciation of our health capital uh, and investment in our health capital by going out to buy medical care to, to replace whatever depreciated. Now we have to start with an initial endowment of H at time zero and then go through this model. Every year of our life we have to watch the depreciation and replace it with new investments. And as we buy these new investments, we're going to care a lot about how efficient those new investments are. We're going to want to buy good stuff, uh, not low quality M, but high quality M. We're going to care that if we get a really bad disease, it might uh, change how much we want to invest in, in that health capital. So we're going to constantly be paying attention to the rate of productivity. This F equation you got to watch it like a hawk because it will determine how much to invest in your your medical care to get your your optimal solution. So since there's time and capital in the model, just like any investment, we're looking towards the future. So by looking towards the future, we need to have multiple periods where we're playing the game of maximize utility. So every year of this model, you get this instantaneous year's utility, little u of at time t depends on consumption at time t and health at time t. And we have a whole chunk of these individual periods. We have the tth period, we have the t plus 1th period, t plus 2, t plus 3, all the way up to the last year of our life, where we have to get utility from all of those years of life. So obviously we know that there's discounting. Those Future, remote future years of life don't count as much, so we use a weighting factor beta. Beta is between 0 and 1, let's say beta is 0 0.9 or 0 0.95, so we raise it to the exponential power of t, so 50 years from now, 0 0.9 to the t is a small number, and so we just don't care today about our utility of our body's health capital 50 years from now because this is exponentially discounted. So we're giving lower weight to the future time periods due to time preference, the beta. So right off the bat, you could apply this model to why do teenagers uh, smoke and uh, drive their cars too fast. It's because they've discounted these future effects on their body, that they believe that the health shock that will come from smoking today will hit them in 50 years and that's heavily discounted and the joy of uh, smoking the cigarette is there right now and you'll get that immediately out of the Grossman model but that's just the start of, of the predictions from the model. So the individual has to maintain a stock of human capital. Its rate of depreciation is changing so unlike other pieces of capital uh, the depreciation rate of a typical car or, or housing unit pretty linear over time. Unfortunately for the human body, the older a body gets, the faster and faster it depreciates. So an old human body, uh, it's depreciating much, much faster going from age uh, 99 to 100 is a much bigger deal than going from age 20 to 21. So this depreciation leads to the need to constantly invest and constantly solve the question, how much health should I have for this coming year? How much new investment do I need to put in to replace what I'm going to lose from depreciation? And the way any good economic agent solves the model is by doing cost-benefit analysis. What is the marginal cost of a new unit of my body's health and what is the marginal benefit of a new unit of my body's health? over my, my life course. The benefits do accrue in the future uh, and I can get 
both money out of this health in the investment model, and I can get utility of health in this, in this investment model. So let's go back to these equations. We have this health capital stock model. Health capital times t is health capital uh, at t minus 1 times 1 minus depreciation. And I have to invest in my body's health, and my investment depends upon medical care and these shifting features that education can shift the productivity of a unit of medical care up and down. The more education I get, the better job I do with every unit of, of medical care or whatever market health ed care input this happens to be. So this notation means f of a conditional on b uh, means that the, the b are conditions that shift the production function up and down. So let's solve the Grossman model. The, the job of the Grossman agent is to maximize this equation here. They want to make this thing as big as possible. Now we're using the, the consumption version of the model right now. We have this time preference discount factor times the instantaneous utility of health at time t and consumption at time t. Summation of all of those times up until the, the end of life. I've got this budget constraint that my income depends upon the, the price of consumption times consumption, the price of medical care times medical care. And I also have uh, a health production function that... So your job is to make this as big as possible. If you make this as big as possible, you're going to get the right balance between health and consumption. And in the Grossman paper, the solution takes a couple of pages. It's a lot of calculus. We are not going to do it in this class. We're not going to offer homework or testing on it. Um, if you guys go to economics grad school, you definitely want to solve it and carry forward improved um, uh, versions of this model. But I will fast forward you to the solution so you don't have to do it. And here, here it is that um, if you solve this model, you will derive this equation, which is kind of neat. It says that R plus delta in the optimum has to equal W times G over C. We'll get into that. Just give me a minute to get to the next slide to talk about what this means. But the thing on the left is going to be interpreted as the marginal cost of investing and buying one more unit of health capital by cashing in some, some consumption opportunities. The thing on the right is the marginal benefit of investing in one more unit of health capital. And marginal benefit equals marginal cost. So the solution uh, is shown here. That's the solution to the Grossman model. Now let's talk about why you should believe me that this thing R plus delta is the marginal cost and WG over C is the marginal benefit. Just quickly. G of H is something I have to tell you what it is, and C of H is something I have to tell you what it is. So let, let me get to telling you what these, these things are before we, we get too far ahead of ourselves. I'm telling you that the marginal cost is this summation of the rate of interest on other investments, the rate of, of return of money that could be used for consumption is R, and delta is the, the, the rate of depreciation of health that you've been seeing for the last 10 minutes. So that could make sense. That could be seen as the cost of investing in health. I have to give up returns in the market. And now that I own this, this new unit of health capital in my body, I lose that it's depreciating, right? When I had money in the bank, it wasn't depreciating at rate delta. It was it was all consume, you know, always covered by the parameter R. But now that I've put this my money into my body's health, I'm now taking on this new cost, which is delta. Now the marginal benefit of my body's health is the wage rate times the marginal product of the health investment on making me have a higher wage. So G of H is how much extra wages I'm going to get. What is the bump up on my wage because my body is healthy? The G of H is a, is a what else the marginal benefit of a unit of health on making me more productive in my job and getting more wages? Finally, the denominator here is the C of H. How much money does it take to actually transform money into 
a standard unit of my body's health capital. So that's the cost of age. So that's the benefit. Now, obviously the thing in the numerator is beneficial, and we just have to, to normalize it to compare apples to apples, we have to divide it by uh, this uh, normalizing factor, which is the, the, the cost of a unit of extra health. Uh, marginal benefit on the right, marginal cost on the, on the left. Let's add a little bit more intuition to that idea that R plus delta is the cost. Supposing Joe has invested in Google and now he wants to buy Apple. What does Joe have to do? He have to sell his Google and take the money and buy Apple. So his marginal cost is the, the, the cost that he would have had in Google. That Whatever rate of return on Google is actually the cost of the shift into Apple. The benefit is easy. It's the rate of return on Apple. It's, you know, R of Google has to equal R of Apple. Well, here, supposing it's not sell one stock and buy another stock, suppose it's sell a stock like a NASDAQ in, uh, fund and now buy health capital. So if you sell a unit of NASDAQ, you're going to give up the future rate of return of NASDAQ. Well, that's the R, the rate of return of capital. However, because you have now are going to start owning health capital, you actually have that new cost delta because you now own uh, a type of asset that depreciates at this extra factor delta. So your marginal cost of shifting your money from the stock market into your body's health is R plus delta. Uh, the marginal benefit is going to be uh, the, the ratio of better wages to the, the cost paid for extra health. The, the future benefits divided by the future cost, kind of like how R is really a rate of future money compared to a current standardized unit of money. These are all ratios all the way around. All right, so now let's look at our solution. Our solution was that uh, R plus delta has to equal G of H times W over C of H. Now, the marginal efficiency of health capital is the right-hand side. MEC, the marginal efficiency of health capital, is a special term that Grossman brought to us. It's really his word for the, the benefit, the marginal benefit of, of health capital. Now, let's look at it. This thing, G of H times W over C of H, W doesn't itself depend on, on H. That's the market wage. But G of H depends on H. That's what you've done to your body to compete for that market wage and try to make it turn into money for yourself. G of H definitely gets smaller as H increases. The healthier and healthier you are, there's diminishing marginal returns to your body's health. As, as after you're 95% healthy, you, you don't get as much extra wages from being 96% healthy as compared to, to earlier on in your health trajectory. So this is just diminishing marginal returns in the labor market to being a healthier worker. Now the cost of H could get smaller, but it usually gets bigger as H increases. Um, here's some uh, two stories. So one story is that the, the cost of your body's unit of health get smaller because you got healthier. Let's think of the case of depression. If Joe is depressed uh, and we cure his depression, we make him not depressed, well, it's going to be so much easier to cure his obesity or his alcoholism. And as long as Joe's depressed, we could spend a fortune on, you know, stomach stapling surgeries and diets to make Joe lose weight. But if his depression is cured, it's actually, this is a fact, it's cheaper to cure obesity in non-depressed people, the same with alcoholism. If you're drinking because you're depressed, uh, the alcohol treatments are going to work easier. It's going to be cheaper. Now, that's true. That can happen. But generally, things are more common like the thing on the right. If Joe is getting cancer, paying for his first remission is going to cost a fair amount of money. But if he has to... So we've improved his health capital by getting him his first remission. But now that we've gotten him the health capital from the first remission, his second remission is going to be more expensive. It's going to use more expensive drugs and the third remission and so on. So in general, adding to your body's health, the more you add to health, the more expensive it gets to add more and more health. Bottom line is, you're going to start seeing MEC curves 
that are negatively sloped with H. G of H over C of H generally goes down as H gets bigger. Crazy exceptions are out there, but generally it's not like that. Second fact is that aging is going to make faster depreciation of health. And because health is depreciating faster and faster as you get older and older, that's going to make the, the MEC curves, the G over C, shift downward over in time. So let's compare. An age 20 person has G of their health capital at age 20 over C of their health capital at age 20. Compare that to the person with G of their health capital at age 60 over C of their health capital at age 60. The person on the right at age 60 is having their health capital depreciate faster and faster. And so they have to spend more and more and more to really generate a stable increment of health. The denominator on the right uh, is, is much bigger, making G uh, over C much smaller. So let's start thinking through how it looks. This is the, back to a new graphical representation of the Grossman model where we have this marginal benefit curve called the MEC curve, WG over H, and it's downward sloping because we said that the, the horizontal axis here is H, the vertical axis here is the, the cost of health capital, and the MEC is, is going to be a, a, a graphical relationship of the cost of health capital as a function of the health stock, and it's downward sloped. The job of the, the economic agent is to find the point of intersection where R plus delta equals the MEC curve, and that's going to happen at point A, and point A tells them the optimal amount of health stock to try to strive for and to invest in order to keep their health stock at this level. As R plus delta moves up and down, the optimal health stock moves up and down. If we send up delta vertically to the, if we send up delta vertically, the health stock uh, move to the left. If, de if delta moves down, health stock moves to the right. If the stock market's really hot and there's lots of returns in the stock market, one would shift into the stock market and shift away from being healthy. So this model predicts that a raging bull market should be accompanied by disinvestment from physical health and we should let our bodies go and put the money in the stock market. So let's do some more comparative statics. Supposing we uh, think about the effects of aging. To think about the effects of aging, we really have two effects. We have the effect of aging on directly increasing delta and moving it from the delta of, let's say, a 20-year-old here to the delta of a 60-year-old. So that goes up. So we have to be looking at uh, intersections here. But the other part is that depreciation gets bigger. But the other part is that the MEC of a 60-year-old has shifted down because C of H gets bigger with age. It's more costly to make your body healthy. So the MEC which goes like one over the cost, is going to shift downward. And so the new equilibrium, the optimal health of the 20-year-old here, the optimal health of the 60-year-old here. 60-year-olds are less healthy than 20-year-olds because they choose to be, because it's optimal not to keep on putting more and more of your money into your old, tired body. When you're 60, the depreciation is too high, and so you choose to have this lower health stock, which is just too expensive and you wouldn't enjoy anything else if you kept on trying to have the health of the 20 year old, you'd be miserable uh, just chasing and chasing and chasing after the, the, the health capital that you can't maintain because of this high depreciation rate. So if it shifts this far to the left aging from 20 to 60, imagine it shifting even more from age 60 to 100, 120, 130, the more it shifts to the left, the harder and harder it is to maintain health capital. And so there's this almost a rational choice just to give up and say, I can't keep up with keeping to invest in my health capital anymore. 
And so the Grossman model predicts an endogenous length of life, a life where, as the quote says, biological factors associated with aging raise the price of human capital and cause individuals to substitute away from future health until death is, quote unquote, chosen. A perfect, you know, this is how an economist would, would reason. Um, outside of economic circles, that type of a quote sounds crazy. Uh, but inside our tribe, we talk like this. All right, let's talk about models of changes in the wage rate. An increase in the wage rate, that's going to increase the MEC. The wage rate is sitting in the MEC's numerator. So if we increase the wage rate uh, and make it bigger, we're going to shift the MEC to the right unequivocally. And if we increase the wage rate, this individual will go from wanting health capital stock one to health capital stock two. Okay, how about changes in education? Well, education is a shifter. It makes the cost of health go down because it makes the marginal product uh, of health more, more efficient. So better educated people, they might actually enjoy exercising due to college norms, but they're mostly just more able to transform medical advice and medical inputs into their body's health. Educated people are better producers of everything. And so because of that, then a unit of health capital bought at the market for an educated person gives them more health and it's worth more. So we're going to find educated people having higher health capital because it's cheaper for them to make their bodies healthy. They don't have to, to spend as much on these uh, market-derived medical inputs because their, their educations make them better producers. And we would predict that more educated people have higher equilibrium stocks of health capital at every single age. So Grossman has a lot to say about how education works and, and he says it plays a crucial role in making all other health capital purchases more efficient. It makes workers on the shop floor of any product production company more wise and judicious. So it makes all people better at using their judgment and creating health. It also changes time preference is the other thing to, to note about education. People who are educated are more able to hold symbolically in their mind an image of their future self because they're good at symbolic processing. So education, because it enables you to symbolize your future old self, you will put more resources into the future for that future old self. Whereas somebody which is who has not symbolized things, symbolizing can happen in a math class, it can happen in a uh, literature class, using uh, physical symbols to think about things that are not present in the here and now, enhances the, the willingness to invest in the future. One of the reasons college graduates um, do invest more into future and they hold more savings it has to do with this effect on uh, symbolic processing. Systematically, what's going to happen in the, the mathematics of the Grossman model is that if we change the purchase price of a unit of health, we're going to see the budget line swiveling outwards from the intercept on the consumption axis. And we're going to see people, because of that swivel, shift their, their resources uh, away from com consumption and towards, towards health. So price reductions in health inputs will predict more substitution towards health. So if we subsidize the price of fortified milk and heating, uh, that will improve the health for those receiving those subsidies. So we can shift people's health capital a little bit by making health inputs cheaper because the Grossman model says you will substitute uh, towards health capital if, if the prices are. If medical science creates an upward shift in the health production function, the F function, then that will also lead people to shift towards higher health capital equilibria. Uh, the individual will be able to, to reach higher levels of health for the same health inputs, and so they will follow that. Uh, they will take their money out of the stock market and say, I'm getting great returns in, in health commodities now because the medical scientists have invented great stuff and my body's health can be dramatically improved with these same units. So a health education program that simply educates people about those technical opportunities might actually shift health. If we just told people 
about the returns they might have in, in their body's health. We might believe that that could increase investments in health, presuming that the message didn't get around, that they were just somehow information constrained. If other capital stocks are low, uh, an individual may choose to deplete their health stocks in order to replenish the, the, the financial capital stocks. So if you're having, uh, for instance, if you're in a high wage occupation uh, and you're, you're, you're having a lot of, of opportunities to get money in that high wage occupation, you might burn the candle uh, at, in your health in order to uh, acquire that money. You might work 50, 60, 70 hours a week. You might stop exercising because you're shifting your, your allocation towards the high returns uh, by supplying more wage labor. A similar argument might be applied to the type of recreation activities. You might invest heavily in, in recreation activities that offering a high return. You might take risks in your love life uh, if you believe that the returns are, are really high there. Uh, the choice behavior outside of health can, can really benefit from this type of modeling of thinking through what's the future effect on my utility from giving up one type of, of capital for another type of capital. The model can be used to predict the, the likely and the unsuspected effects of policy changes. Here's an example. The government might offer extended clinic hours and might say to its federally uh, funded health centers, you should open up your hours at night and offer more convenient access. We want to have clinic hours outside of working time so that a worker doesn't have to actually give up nine to five work time in order to, to go to the clinic. Open up evening hours. It could help people shift towards more utilization. If you did that, if you opened up extra hours, it would increase the, the MEC of both the rich and the poor. It would offer both the rich and the poor an equivalent benefit in terms of the, the lower cost of, of achieving health. But since the value of extra time is greater for the rich, they're going to get more money from the extended clinic hours, and they might go in and use even more health services than the poor because the cost of time is higher for the rich than the poor. So if you are offering extended clinic hours and offering the, both the rich and the poor, you might not narrow uh, health gradients between the rich and the poor. You might actually widen them because the rich and the poor value their time differently. And we'll come back to this policy implication. So circle it. We're going to come back to this when we talk about health equity. So criticisms of this model, number one, uh, it's very microeconomics in the sense that it doesn't give guidance to the, the public health sector, doesn't give any credit for production decisions that might affect the cleanliness of air and water. Uh, that's not in the model at all. It assumes that health care is a constant lifetime investment. It ignores the markets for health care insurance. You learn nothing about health care insurance in this model. It is a model where everybody knows everything, that it assumes perfect information about every parameter. Individuals know all the interest rates, they know the production function, they know depreciation. And it's deterministic about everything. Everything is determined, even the choice of when to die. If we want to summarize the, the model, big implication is that people want health, they don't want health care. Nobody says, I want a tablet of aspirin, they say, I want my headache to go away. It also, very important, says that consumers are the producers of health. It also says that health has this time dimension. It doesn't depreciate instantly. The demand for health has a pure consumption and a pure investment aspect. The details that we just covered say that the cost of holding a unit of health capital is the opportunity of cost of capital, which is the, the forsaken return in the capital market, plus the depreciation rate of, of health capital. We know that the MEC curve is downward sloping because of diminishing benefits of health capital. And finally, it 
I was going to make a prediction that we really need to come back to in the future when we care about differences between the rich and the poor's health. This model says that the rewards of being healthy and the intrinsic demand for health is going to be greater for rich people than poor people. They are always going to want to try harder to be healthy because the healthy body for a rich person gives them more money than the healthy body of a poor person. Nothing you can do to change that according to the Grossman model. So we're going to go on to a quick quiz and I'll come back and see you again in part three.